Okay, we're back. Uh, in the last video, we talked a lot about the structure of aquaporin, especially on the outside. We talked about the tandem repeats uh, so that you can see that the, the front half and the back half or the first half and the second half are very similar to each other. Um, and that they, remember we talked, they're kind of just inverted. Um, but now we're going to talk about what's happening in the pore, what the specific amino acids are in the pore that, that allow this protein to be water selective, um, and, but yet allow them to, the water molecules to move through at a very rapid pace, like thousands per second. Okay, so hopefully in your study, you've come across some of the, of the amino acids, the important amino acids that, that I mentioned in the worksheet, and you kind of try to understand what the significance is. Um, one of the, probably the, uh, the, the motif that is always, always, always in every aquaporin, it's highly conserved in all aquaporins, is the NPA motif. NPA stands for asparagine, proline, and alanine. Okay, those three amino acids are found um, in each half, in each tandem repeat of every aquaporin. And hopefully you are able to find those in your gene maps. Um, if, you, if we look at the pore of my model here, you'll see that right here and right here are the two asparagines. I only highlighted the two asparagines because they're really important um, in hydrogen bonding with the water. We're going to talk about the mechanism a little bit more later, but hopefully you can at least see that, um, when I put this back together, how closely they, they sit in the pore, okay? And so we'll talk about them um, a little bit later. What else do we have in there? Now, I asked you about a couple of amino acids, histidine 180 and cysteine 189. So let's kind of look at those and understand why they're important. Okay, on this, so this is all in the second half of the, uh, the aquaporin. You'll see histidine 180 right here and cysteine 189 right here. Well, histidine um, is an interesting amino acid because we're going to talk about its relationship to two other um, or three other amino acids later on and how that um, is important in the, the narrowest part of the channel. But, um, so it, it, really, it, it really is part of the gate that allows water in selectively. Um, but what they found is that uh, when they look at all aquaporins, and there are about, in the humans, there are about 13 known isoforms of aquaporin. And again, these are areas that you can, you can decide to, to choose for your final projects. But when they looked at them, there are two kind of general types of aquaporins. There are aquaporins that are specifically selective to water transport. And then there are some things called aquaglyceroporins, aquaglyceroporins. And they not only allow water, they allow the transport of glycerol as well. And I'm not going to spend a lot of time talking about those. Again, Pursue that as a final project if you're interested. But the interesting thing is that histidine 180 does not exist in the aquaglyceroporins. So they feel like researchers think that that is important in water selectivity. Okay? Um, it still is very selective, does not allow ions through or anything, but when that's missing, glycerol can get through as well. All right. What about the cysteine 189? Now that is interesting because long before they even understood that there were these aquaporins, these, these water channels, uh, they knew that there was water transport in some cells and some tissues, very fast water transport. And they also found that this could be inhibited with mercury. So that they, under, they knew that there was something going on there where when, when tissue cells were exposed to mercury, water transport was inhibited. And through site-directed mutagenesis, different types of techniques to really focus on substituting amino acids one by one, 
they were able to find that if you substitute cysteine 189, you lose that ability for mercury to inhibit water transport, okay? So those are two very important, highly conserved amino acids in aquaporins. Again, histidine is not in the aquaglycerporins, but they're in all aquaporins. So those two are important. But now those are two of um, a group of four amino acids that are really important in what they call the aromatic arginine selectivity filter. Now, something you should be aware of is the Murata paper that I gave you, it's a very early paper. It's like one of the first structures of aquaporin one that was published. And so not everything, not a lot, I mean, still we don't know everything about the function of aquaporin, but a lot was not known. And they were deducing things from the structure, but they weren't exactly sure about how a lot of it worked. Um, but now, if you read recent papers, they will talk about the aromatic uh, arginine selectivity filter quite a bit because it turns out that that seems to be the one of the primary reasons for the selectivity. And it's because it these four amino acids, so it's the histidine 180, the cysteine 190, 189, plus two other amino acids, phenylalanine 56 and arginine 195. These are in this structure. Again, you'll find an aromatic arginine selectivity filter in all, amino, or in all aquaporins, but different isoforms, those numbers of those amino acids might be slightly different. So beware that those numbers may change as you read other papers about other isoforms. But what they found is that those four amino acids come together in the pore and make the, ver the smallest, the smallest um, diameter of the pore right at that place. And what was interesting when I was, when I was designing my model is I took the Murata paper and I took that PDB file and I designed this, this model hoping to be able to look at that selectivity filter. And what happened was because this was an early structure and because it wasn't the best crystal structure that they have now, there was one of the amino acids that was evidently moving a little bit. So, so when they actually were looking at the density of that amino acid, it was hard to tell what direction it was heading in. And so if you look at it here, you've got the phenylalanine right here, the histidine, the cysteine, and then the arginine is poking back inside the protein instead of being in the pore where it probably belongs. And you can kind of look, if you look inside the pore, you can see three amino acids and the other one sticking where it doesn't belong. So that's kind of an interesting, um, an interesting insight into some of these structures. And you'll see as you, as you get really early structures, they might not be nearly as refined as ones that you'll see later in the literature. So these four, four amino acids um, form what they call the uh, aromatic arginine selectivity filter. They call it that because there's always an arginine and there appears to be always um, an aromatic amino acid. And those are, so in this case it's phenylalanine. Um, it's a nonpolar uh, amino acid uh, with a ring structure in it. And um, in some aquaporins it may not be phenylalanine. Maybe it's tyrosine or tryptophan or something like that, but um, there will always be an aromatic amino acid and arginine. And, um, and what they think happens is that there is, you know, we know we need to, that, that aquaporins need to be selective for water and, and exclude all other ions. So it excludes, because of the size of it, it excludes sodium, potassium, other ions pretty well. However, the hardest job that it has is actually excluding hydrogen ions because water does not really exist all by itself, right? We know that water, from what the work that you've done, you know that water, hydrogen bonds to itself. Um, it hydro hydrogen bonds to other amino acids, all kinds of things, right? It hydrogen bonds to things that are polar, that have positive, like positive or negative charges, including other hydrogen ions or protons. 
So you find that there are these things called hydronium ions, H3O with a positive, slight positive charge, um, floating around. And it could be really easy for a water molecule to go through a water channel, an aquaporin, and this, this hydrogen ion to be pulled through with it. And it's really important that that doesn't happen because you don't want hydrogen ions moving around because um, without some kind of control. Because as you know, they can affect um, pH, they can, they, you know, it, it's, it needs to be very tightly regulated. So that is the biggest question is how does that happen? How do water molecules get through and leave that water, that, that proton behind? And they think what happens, you know, so actually there's a, there's a really kind of cool video that shows um, what this mechanism is for the way, the way water can actually allow these extra protons to come through because they actually can cause a proton to come off of one water molecule and add to another water molecule in a kind of a chain. And um, this is something that needs to be disrupted in the aquaporin so that um, these protons aren't incidentally transferred across the, the aquaporin. So the way that that happens, they think, is that this selectivity filter is so narrow and it's got these positive charges. It's got the arginine and the histidine that are able to disrupt all these hydrogen bonds between other, between other waters and between protons, okay? So it, it breaks up the, the uh, hydrogen bonds so that water has to go through individually, single file, through the selectivity filter. So once it gets through there, it's starting to work its way through that selectivity filtered through the pore, single file. And then it gets to the, um, what we call the NPA motifs, right? So again, I'll open this up. And the selectivity filter is, is near, closer to the beginning of this, of this pore. And then further down, you've got these very, these NPA or these arg or asparagines, uh, rather, uh, amino acids vary in very close approximation. And it's difficult to see, but they really, they kind of line up along one side of the pore. And on the other side of the pore are nonpolar amino acids. And so what happens is the water is, is forced along the side where the asparagines are, and they then hydrogen bond to them one at a time. And it's kind of like the asparagines kind of, you know, grabbing their hand and walking them through the, the pore one at a time. They kind of just transfer them from one, one side to the other. So the exact mechanism of how the NPA uh, motifs are involved in this transfer of water through, through the rest of the pore is also subject to a lot of controversy. There's talk about um, dipoles in the center there and how there's a change of charge that causes the oxygens to flip um, from, you know, uh, or oxygen facing one way to oxygen facing the other way. And that does appear to happen, but there's a lot of controversy as to what exactly is causing that to happen. And so um, if that is an area that you find interesting, you should find a lot of interesting papers uh, to read on that as well, and that would make a, a wonderful story. Uh, we, have, we have some models here that, um, and maybe you have one in your classroom, that actually shows the water being um, passed through in single file. And you can see how the asparagines interact with the water molecules as they pass through this pore. So again, um, there is a lot that's known about the structure function relationships of aquaporin, and there's still a lot yet to be understood. So uh, a lot of active research in these areas. So hopefully that has helped you understand a little bit about how the structure is related to aquaporin function, um, and also it hopefully gave you good ideas about what you can do for your final projects. Um, if, these, if none of these interest you, please check out the Haiku page. I've got little bits and pieces about a lot of different isoforms that you might be interested in. So go out, um, explore. Um, figure out what your adventure is going to be, and please use the discussion boards. 
tell us what you're thinking about doing. Let's try to get some conversation going on the discussion board so we can, we can explore with you. All right, thanks and have fun.